just figured I'd do some game development here. Uh, this is not a video of any particular topic. I'm just getting some work done on my game, and I needed to put out a recording, so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, right now I'm working on uh, the forest dungeon for the procedural dungeon generator. Uh, we're going to see how that, uh, how much progress I can get done on that today. I'm hoping I can get the first configuration for uh, S, T, U, and V done. Um, I'm going to get these ones done tomorrow, I think. So yeah, if you've seen any of the videos I put out on the procedural dungeon generator I made, um, I finally finished the cave dungeon, and now I'm focusing on the forest. It's a little bit interesting, though, kind of how this one works. It takes a little bit more ingenuity, in a way, uh, because of what I have to do is I have to make sure that there's a bit of overlap uh, between the sections that get uh, generated. So the base here would generate in as its own section, but then all the surrounding space uh, would get copied in uh, and blended together with the other overlays. Uh, so it took a little bit of work to kind of figure out an overlap system that worked, but it seems to work now. So I am going to work on, let's see here, configuration S. So that's closed off on the bottom, and you can exit out the left, right, and top. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to use my clone tool. Uh, we're going to take the clipboard image, and I will copy an image right away here. Let's go 64 brush size, acrylic number 5, 75 spacing at 80 opacity. Uh, let's turn off the grid collision. Yeah, we're good there. Uh, under my resources, let's take the dirt sample and copy that, and that should give us the, you know, the brush we need. Okay, so we need to go kind of at the top and the side here, just like that. That should be good. Let's take the grass. Got a saved tile for that. I, want to, I don't want to get too close to the edge because I want to make sure that it blends nicely. Uh, but the trees will kind of conceal any rougher edges anyway. There, that should be good. Okay, let's merge those together and dodge and burn. go. Okay. Yeah, it's got a little bit of texture, a bit of kind of varying, varied lighting there. That's good. Let's turn the grid collision back on. Yeah, we're good. All right. Uh, and let's start by bringing some trees in. So what I've been doing with this is that I've actually, I have a collection of trees that I've been using um, in uh, their own kind of separate folder called tree sources, you know, instead of resources. Uh, and I've got them bunched by short trees, which are like only five tiles high at the most, and then tall trees, which can be quite a bit larger, quite a bit wider. Um, and the way I place these is based on kind of where it is in the map. I don't want to conceal the path, so I put short trees kind of along the edge. Um, and then what I've been doing is in the previous, whatever uh, section that I finish, I just take that folder and I copy what's left and I move it over. And then when, it, when that folder totally runs out, I duplicate the full folder again just to make sure that I'm not using the same trees for every single section, uh, and they kind of rotate through. So let's start bringing some trees in. And we'll just kind of start. Now the way that this works is that the overlap will make sure that the bottom three tiles of the adjacent um, uh, room cannot... Uh, it, nothing's going to spawn there, so I can place trees in such a way where the top three tiles above them um, are obscured, and it's not going to hide anything in that room. So we'll do probably two rows of short trees, and then we'll start bringing in some taller trees. There we go. And yeah, let's bring in some tall trees now. For the most part, I just kind of pick one out at random. Sometimes I see a tree where it's like, oh, I, I actually really want to bring that one in right now. Uh, that one I actually can't use. Just gets a little bit weird with the overlay. Normally I would do this listening to music, but I don't want to get the video taken down because of copyright strike. So 
I don't care about monetization. I'm I will never care about monetization with YouTube. I, yeah, but I just don't want the video taken down. All right, and let's do some short trees on the side here. Uh, yeah, we'll start right on the edge there. And we'll go one there. One there, and that should be... Uh, I don't know if I want that one, actually. Let's bring in something a little bit uh, either shorter or easier to see through there, just so it doesn't obscure the whole path. All right, uh, a couple more short trees on the second row. Uh, I'm going to bring this one over here, and I'm going to try to block off this whole section here. Now, the way that the collision is working for this is that um, because rooms, there are certain configurations, will only appear next to each other, I actually only need to block off... Um, two sides uh, and then the map will the framing of the map will actually block off the remaining sides so what I'm doing here is that if there's a, a map where you can only exit out the left and the top I block off the right and the bottom uh, but I don't I, I'll never totally block off the left side of the top um, unless it's, it's just kind of coincidence but I, I don't have to because the maps that are blocked off on the top will be adjacent to maps that are blocked off on the bottom and so if I only block off the bottom of the maps that are impassable in that direction, it will line up with the maps that are impassable up top as well. Uh, and I'll kind of give you an example of that once we're done here. Uh, let's just get a couple more of these short trees in. Make sure that I put them in the right order. Uh, no, I need one that's at least two, there we go, two tiles wide. And so just by doing this, it is impassable down below. So that's all I need to block off passage from the bottom there. Yeah, there we go. And the rest is just all frills, basically. Uh, I'll use this tree, but I'm going to bring it down one. There we go. Put another tree in that row though. Yeah, that's good. And one more tall tree. There we go. Good. Okay, that's our trees for this section. Uh, let's close that and we'll do three obstacles and three just kind of um, flowers and stuff. Uh, let's put this here. And then what I'll do is I'll... Oh, no, no, right, this is a hallway. This isn't a, a clearing, so I don't have to worry about chest spawn points or anything. Yeah, that's good there. Let's see, a stump. Let's bring that in... Um, right there. And one more obstacle. Let's go... Sure, this little aloe plant. It's kind of... doesn't really make a lot of sense for this to be in this environment, but that's fine. Okay, and let's bring in some flowers and stuff. Let's go, let's put this one in, because these aren't blocking any path, we can kind of have them off center from the grid. Uh, let's put that up there, and then let's see if I can bring in like a flower or a mushroom or something that's, uh, yeah, a mushroom, there we go. And let's kind of tuck that in behind some of the trees and stuff. Just make it kind of peeking out. There we go. Good. Okay, um, and that's it for this map. So let's set up our overlay and then set up our collision. So we're just going to duplicate the trees, drag that into the overlay. I'm going to set the opacity to 80, and I'm going to hide it for now. Let's go into the base layer, and we're going to remove the tops of the trees. And we'll just go row by row, moving the selection as we go along. Oh, I messed up the order of these trees a little bit, but that's okay. Main reason I'm doing this video is actually because of uh, another game developer slash YouTuber uh, by the name of Artindi, uh, who's been doing daily... Uh, live streams of his game development um, 
for the last, like for this whole week. And uh, it just kind of made me realize that, you know what, sometimes um, what you need to be productive is an audience. And uh, I'm not streaming. Uh, I don't have the followers for that. Uh, maybe one day I will, but I'm... I don't know, maybe once I... I don't know, I'm not trying to have a huge uh, following or anything like that. Uh, mostly the whole point of this channel is actually just to uh, bring some awareness to this game and... Hopefully when it's actually released, uh, there will be a couple people that are actually excited for its release. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, I, I kind of saw how uh, Artendi's been doing, um, he's been live streaming, streaming the development pro progress of his game. And uh, did I do the wrong layer? No, no, no. Yeah, that's, that's right, we're good. Because there's the base. There's the overlay. Yeah, there we go. I was just a bit distracted. Uh, but yeah, Artenzi's been doing a great job um, just live streaming the development of his game. And it kind of made me realize that sometimes just... If you just sit down and you you have whatever else going on in the background at the same time, it's easy to get distracted, it's easy to kind of lose focus, and you just don't get much done. But as soon as you sit down with the purpose of you're actually showing somebody what you're doing and what you're working on, and you have someone of an audience, um, productivity improves. And so that's kind of my point with making this video is I actually just want to get some work done and I, I want to see how much I can get done in about an hour. I don't want to go too long. I do have some plans today, but we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so this is good. I've got my overlay. I've got the base layers. Uh, so let's turn the overlay off for now. We'll bring up our pencil tool, set it to one pixel, and let's set up the collision. Now, uh, the way I have it set up with this one is that gray tiles are um, basically a replacement for blue tiles, but because there's going to be so many blue tiles and I don't want to overwrite the uh, tile data for every single one of them, uh, it's basically they're just going to be skipped. Uh, and in the actual map itself, um, all the the map is basically filled with passable non-spawnable tiles. Uh, as opposed to the Bloodstone Mine, where it's filled with impassable tiles and it overwrites anything, everything else. Uh, this is going to work a little bit differently. So, in here, let's... Basically, all I need to do is set up the collision for places you cannot walk. Uh, so, kind of a weird way of doing this. I just kind of count how many spaces away uh, the first collision is, and then I count how many spaces I need to add collision for, and I go from left and then from the right. So space one and space two on the top row, so space one, space two, and yellow means it'll overwrite it with impassable tiles, so space, space one, and then one, second row, space, space one, one, okay, uh, space two, space one, space two, space one, good, uh, down here we got two and then three right off the bat. So we'll go two, oh, nope. Two, one, two, three, good. Uh, and then there's nothing impassable for one, two, three, four spaces below that. And then the fifth one down is one, space, space, two, space, space, one. So one, two, three, four, one, space, space, two, space, space, one. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to replace these blue tiles. Okay. One, two, space, space, two, space, one. One, two, space, space, two, space, one. There we go. Uh, two, space, space, one, space, space, one. Two, space, space, one, space, space, one. Good. And space, space, one, space, space, three. Space, space, one, space, space, three. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that looks good. So that's our collision. The game will read those pixels and it will overwrite the tile data corresponding with the spots on this map accordingly. So that's it for this room. This is configuration, I think S. Yeah, S. One. I should have actually saved this first. Let me do that. Wire S1. There we 
go. And export that as A, S, 1, so variant A, configuration S, and the first first one of those set. Okay, let's bring the ground layer in to folder S. And my computer is slow. We're going to go into the overlay, hide the ground, bring up the overlay, export that. And that's it for that room. Let's give that a test. Let's see how it works in the game. I set up a bit of a quicker way to actually test configurations. And because this is hallways, uh, I've forced it to spawn in players, chests, and enemies. Let me turn that down. Just on the system, not on the recording. But um, I've found a way to actually force the spawning of players, chests, and enemies when the only thing that spawns in to a dungeon is rooms, just so that I can test them. I'm going to disable that later. And uh, let's see, we're doing configuration S. So um, M is 13, N, O, P, Q, R, S. So room 19. Uh, I had no point in checking the collision with the debug mode because it's just going to be a jumbled mess, but that's okay. Let's just see how that loads in. Yeah, this looks like our room. Yeah, there's that little stump, there's the bush. Yeah, it looks like it loaded in properly. It looks like the collision is working the way that it should. That's good. And yeah, even though the top is open, the bottom is closed off, so I'm not going to be able to exit out the top there. But it looks like it stitched them together pretty good. It's the only room that's being generated right now is this one, because that's what it's, I'm forcing it to do that. But yeah. And then yeah, the border of the map will close off all the other edges. Okay, that one worked. Let's get, let's get a few more of those done. Uh, so, I'm going to copy the resources folder from S1, and we're going to load up a new... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Let's do T1 now. Let's paste in the resource folder there. Just hide it behind the thing. Save as liar T1. So my plan is to get all the... Uh, initial configurations done first uh, so that I can actually randomly generate any um, like r randomly generate an actual full layout um, even if there are duplicate sections uh, on each given floor um, and then from there I'm gonna go back into all the ones that I've finished and I'm gonna do all four variants uh, where basically I will erase a corner of the collision for like the trees and stuff and replace it with a pond instead uh, so that it kind of connects um, to the other adjacent sections and it makes like one large pond instead of a cluster of trees to for, for its collision. Uh, and then once I've got those variants done then I will um, go back and I'll finish all the hallways which is everything from I think O onward? No, uh, P onward. So P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Uh, I'll finish all the ones I need for that, and then I will go back and finish the rooms. And I've kind of got a tracker here to show which ones I still have left to do. Right now I've got 168 rooms left to do. That sounds like a lot, but the 104 variants will take maybe a week. Those are super quick, because uh, I don't have to recreate the entire map. I, have, I just have to recreate one corner. Anyway, uh, let's do a couple more. I actually don't need the separate layers for that, so we're just going to go straight to the clone tool on the base layer. 64, 75, clipboard image. Let's bring up our dirt layer. Copy that. And this is T, which means that the collision is blocked off on the right-hand side, so we're just going to go straight up like that, and then kind of sweep back down and exit out the left, just like that. That should be good, and I don't think that's going to... No, that's good. Okay, uh, let's bring in our grass layer, grass tile, and we'll clone that kind of in the clearings here. Now, because this is blocked off on the right-hand side, I actually do need to make sure that it does fully close, uh, and there's no gaps. Uh, if it was exiting out the left, it wouldn't really matter. 
but we will see what we can do here. Uh, so let's dodge and burn. Bring some, hold on a sec. Disable grid collision, that'll help. There we go. Give it a bit more texture, a bit of different lighting and shading. It is a forest after all. I don't want to do too much on the edges because then you get these weird hard edges that look a little bit odd when the maps connect, but the tree lines kind of obscure it a bit, as long as the interior is a bit more textured. Okay, that's good. Uh, and let's do our trees. Uh, not in that folder, but in this one. Let's go with that there, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna, uh, no, I'll close that off a little bit. These are hallways, they're not clearings. Uh, so the purpose of the rooms that I'm working on right now is that nothing's gonna spawn into them. They're just kind of ways to connect other maps and you pass straight through them. Um, the other rooms that I did, I'll just kind of give you an example. Uh, like this one here is actually more of an open clearing. So the idea is that, you know, a chest will spawn here, the player will spawn here, enemies can spawn there as well. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But these rooms are just, uh, just meant to be passed through. Uh, let's go back to tall trees. Actually, hold on, I've only got six of these left in this uh, okay, yeah, no, looks like I'm going to run out of trees for this, before, so I'm going to have to duplicate the other section, and that's okay. Uh, that obscures only three tiles. Yep, we're good there. Let's bring in this one. There we go. Okay, uh, let's do a small tree, not that one. There we go, and that's probably all I'll do for that side. And let's go, yeah, let's place that birch there. Those trees, I'm not sure if they really fit, but I like the look of them, so who cares? <laughs> uh, it's still not yet for that one. Okay, let's bring this one in here. Is that going to obscure too much of the path? No, I think it's okay. Especially because it's a little bit more open on this corner. So, it, yeah. Again, nothing will be able to spawn behind the trees, so it won't... Uh, it should be fine the way it is. Uh, I'm going to have to start bringing in small trees for that corner there. Let me just bring this one in here, and let's put it right, uh, yeah, right right on the edge there, that's good. Okay, uh, that's all I have for those trees, so let's go back to our initial folder, duplicate the one that I had before, bring that in, and resume the process from scratch with a full folder of trees. Uh, we'll go with a short tree to start off the side here. One there, yep. Yeah, this one's good. Uh, put it there. Another tall tree, not that one. Uh, yeah, that one. Bring that in right around here, yeah. And then one more, there we go, that's a good one. Place it right there, yeah, okay. And so the way that works is that this side should be totally blocked off. There shouldn't be any gaps uh, that the player can walk through, but it's still open on the top, bottom, and left there. Okay, um, obstacles. Ooh, I don't know if I like this one because I don't wanna, hmm. I mean, I do like the look of this tile. It's a nice looking tile. Um, but no, I don't think I'm going to include that one. Not not here. Let's see. Yeah, sure. I'll 
place that down there. Let's see. We'll, ooh, I like this rock for one specific reason, and that's that there's an enemy that appears in this forest called a gnome that uses this rock as its uh, image, like its sprite, until you get too close. And then when you get too close, it bursts out of the stone and it chases you. And it just looks like a little little goblin, little gnome thing. Um, so I like using these rocks uh, just kind of in innocuous places throughout the dungeon because you have to figure out, is it benign or is it actually a gnome that's going to chase you and attack you? Uh, so let's place that right there. There we go. And we'll bring in this little flower. I'm just going to put it kind of... Mm. Where do I want to put this? No, let's put it there. It's kind of tucked in behind the tree. All right. This little weed. That can go there. A little bit of dirt. I'll place that right there on the path. Not another dirt pile. Ooh, I like this one. I'm going to kind of tuck this one behind one of the trees. Um, oh, I am in the wrong folder here. There we go. Yeah, just kind of poking out from behind the tree like that. I like that. Okay. I have the resources, and I think that's it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll duplicate this, bring that into the overlay, set its opacity to 80, and go back to the base layer. Oh, that's not supposed to be in there. Did I do that for all of them? No. Okay, we're good. Select the tops of the trees, and away we go. Oh, I didn't hide the overlay. There we go. Remove the tops. Just make our way up. There is a little bit of a visual glitch that happens um, on the borders of the maps where the trees kind of overlap each other. Um, that doesn't look terrible, but it is noticeable if you're looking for it. Um, it's barely noticeable if you're not. Uh, and I, I get the feeling most players won't notice it at all. But it kind of looks like a tree that's maybe a little bit further back might actually be overlapping a tree that's up, more up front. Um, and I'm not sure how to fix that. But I do, I mean, it. it's not that bad. It, I'll see if I can show you what I'm talking about when we get to testing. But, uh, oh, no, I don't need that. There we go. I don't think it'll be too big of an issue. Um, I'm more worried about making sure that the bases of the trees don't appear on top of the branches. That would be a little bit too weird. Um, and that isn't an issue, just because of the way that the game um, places its layering uh, for the overlays and the ground layers, and because of how I'm setting up uh, the actual images themselves and the maps. But, uh, yeah, I get, well, I guess I'll see when the game goes live and I get some feedback, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, and, all right, that's it for the base. Uh, no, that was the overlay. Right, that's the base. Yeah, that's the overlay. Okay, no, that's it. Perfect. Okay, uh, hide that and let's set up our collision. Uh, let's just get rid of these first. Okay, go back to the yellow tile and... Okay, so space one and then two. Oops. There we go. One, two spaces in one. Space two and two. Two, two spaces in one. Space 
space one, two, and the rest uh, for the next little bit are all on the right side. So it's space one, one, space two, two, all on the right side. So space one, one, space two, two, good. And now the bottom three rows here. So one, space one. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Space two, one, space one. And one space one, space one. One space one, space one. There we go. And just take a quick look. I believe that is everything there. Let me make sure there's four spaces between one, two, three, four. Yep, no, I think we are good there. Okay, let's export that. AT1. Ooh, excuse me. Bring in the overlay, hide the base. Uh, oh, one second here. Move that into the ground layer. Overlay. Good, okay. I just want to double check that I actually put the ground layer in the right folder there. Yeah, I did, okay, good. All right, let's test this one. So this should be configuration number 20. It is nice with this, instead of having to implement entire maps uh, in the actual game itself, um, I can just drag the image into the file uh, folder and it does it for me. That makes things a lot smoother for implementation. All right, what do we got? Um, we kind of spawned in a weird spot, but that's okay. Okay, here's an example. You see those rocks down there. One of them is benign. One of them is a gnome. And he will pop out of the rock and chase you. And I love that enemy. He's one of my favorite enemies that I've made so far. Okay, now yeah, this looks all right. For just a simple pass-through section where, you know, you're not in, nothing's intended to spawn in these rooms, but you're just kind of going from one part of the forest to another, that's not terrible. Let me see if I can see that visual glitch that I was telling you about. Okay, yeah. So you see this tree here, the base of that tree would be sort of like down here, but this tree, the base of it's here, but it looks like it's sort of overlapping that tree right here, and that's, I don't like that, but the only way that I can think of doing that is actually layering the entire, uh, it, honestly, I'm not even really sure if there is a way that I can fix that. Um, just with how this game generates dungeons uh, and how this system works. But again, I I think more players are going to be focused on the path in front of them and the clearings than they are the actual trees. And you know what? It doesn't look horrible. I, I don't really like how that tree overlaps the one to the side, but unless you're looking for it, it doesn't... I don't think it really stands out that much. I feel like it's relatively subtle. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it too much, but I may need to find a fix for that at some point. Um, and it's just one of the trade-offs of making procedurally dungeon generated dungeons using parallax mapping, is that sometimes you do have to actually have some... You, you have less control over the end result, in a way, when it's algorithmically done. Okay, I may not have time to do the next two configurations here because I do have to get going um, relatively soon. I've got I've got some plans today. Um, family's in town, so I want to go pay them a visit. But I will see what I can get done. I'll try I'll try to do two um, in the next twenty minutes or so here. I, that's not going to happen, but I'll see what I can do. Okay, uh, so that was T one. We're going to do U one, which is pass through horizontally, uh, blocked off on the top and bottom. Paste that. We're going to save as liar u1. And the nice thing is that, yes, I do have 186 of these rooms to do, basically, to make one full procedurally generated dungeon. Um, 
but the nice thing is they 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 go by quick. It's a lot more manageable of a workload than you know twenty three hour rooms. You know I, I used to spend three hours on average roughly making some of the dungeons in this game. Uh, let me see if I can yeah I'll find one of the old ones just to kind of show you like this here making an entire map like this, this took three hours to do, on average. Um, and the end result, I don't think, is any better. I, I actually think it's arguably worse than the procedurally generated, where you don't know where everything is, you don't know what the layout is. I, it, Me, as the developer, if I spawned into this room right here, and I saw this tree next to this pond and these this flower here, I would immediately know what map this is and where to go. And if I, as the developer, know that, then somebody playing this game who plays it enough could eventually learn the map as well. And so, yes, I have more control of the final result with a map like this, but at the same time, this is three hours worth of work for one floor. And if you're trying to do the system that I was doing, I had to do, like, almost 30 of these. That's an insane amount of work. But instead, I can just do 180 of these tiny rooms here that take very little time to do. Um, and on top of that, I'd like 180 sounds like a lot, but once you get the, the first 26 done, the rest is actually a lot of just more of the same, and, and actually there's a solid 100 maps that are just a corner and not a full map, so that really cuts down on it. But yeah, it's just, it's it's a much more manageable workload. All right, enough chatter, enough babbling. Let's get this done. 64, 75, clipboard, dirt, copy, hide that. And this one's just going straight across. I'm just going to kind of do a little dip, but that's good. Uh, let me try that again. There. Uh, let's bring in the grass. There we go. A little bit of tall grass. Good. Okay. Yeah. Dodge and burn. Hide the grid. The nice thing about this, um, about doing the forest dungeon, is that I don't have to do anything in the editor. I can do everything in GIMP. So it just makes it a little bit more streamlined, a little less... There's a, just a, there's a few less steps that I have to worry about. Okay, so I don't have to block off the entire top, but because this is just a hall hallway, quote-unquote. I don't know if I want to have the same tree side by side like that. That's a slightly different shading, but it's the same shape, so let's try a different one. Um, where is that tree? I need to move it. There we go. Um, yeah, the nice thing about doing the forest and being able to do it all in GIMP, it just makes it a little bit more streamlined. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't have to block off the entire um, top here because the bottom of all the adjacent maps will be blocked off. So I may go a little bit light on the trees here. Ah, uh, nah. The other thing about it is that, um, yeah, you're just passing through this map. You're not actually, um, it's not a full clearing. So I do need to have a little bit more collision, I guess you could say. More obstruction. Oh, I like that tree. Not that one. I like those trees, but I can't use them in this uh, in this style, just because they do have a little bit of a the the, the overlay gets a little bit odd with them. 
Hmm. How do I want to do this? That's my laundry. Okay. You know what? I'm going to put this tree here. I'm going to bring this one out, and I'm going to put it there. And then what I'll probably do is put, like, a stump or something here just to block off passage there. Again, I don't really need to, but it would just make it a little bit um, less... Uh, how you say? I don't know. Tangled? There we go. Good. Okay. Short trees. And we're going to do the bottom. I'm probably just going to finish up this map and then be done. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do the, the next configuration. Next configuration is configuration V, and that's just a vertical pass through. So it's the same as this, just different direction. Um, Hmm. Yeah, like that. There's a little bit of a dip in the path, so I think I kind of want the top of the tree to kind of frame it in a way. There's quite a bit of actual focus that goes into determining how the maps get put together. It's not just totally random. Um, I do have to be a little bit careful with my placement of some things, just to make sure that it doesn't look completely carelessly put together until I get to this point, because now that is blocks off the entire bottom half of this map, so I can kind of place trees wherever I need to now. I can be a little bit... <sighs> you know what? Actually, I may be able to make use of this one but I have to be careful with it. If I place this one here, I can use that tree. But there's one thing I need to do first. I'm going to place one here, and then what I'll have to do, let's place another tall tree, and let's place it here. Yeah, there. And then what I, all I have to do is place something that can block off these tiles and these tiles, and I don't have to worry about the overlay on that one now. Not that one. Yeah, that one. There we go. So that blocks off those two base tiles there. And let's bring in a short tree, because I just did a bunch of tall trees in a row. Not that one. That, yeah, that one's fine. Place that there. And then one more tall tree. Actually, hold on. Ah, uh, yeah, one more tall tree. Not that one. Not that one. No, uh, that one. There we go. There we go. All right, okay. There's our trees. Let's bring in the obstacles in the brush. Place that there, and then that kind of blocks off that section. Uh, I've got a stump here. I like that stump, actually. It's a nice stump. Let's just kind of place it at the base of all the dead trees. And a log. Let's place this. Let's place this down here. Uh, mm, maybe? Hmm. I'll place the log there, and I'm going to place the stump down here. Yeah. There. And now let's go with the brush. Let's see. We'll go that there. There. And I mean, this is mostly random, but that's, yeah. This one here, let's bring this in. Let's kind of tuck this in behind some of the trees. Right like that, there, I like that. So if I hide the grid. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I like that one. Okay, that's our map. Hide the brush, hide the obstacles, hide the resources, and yep, let's set up our overlay and then our collision. And then that's it. And then yeah, this will be the last map for uh, this uh, development period here. I, did, I just don't have as much time today as I would like to have. Uh, did I screw something up? No, no, no. Yeah, the variance folder. I'm saving that for another time. Uh, grid collision's on. Yes, it is. Good. Okay. Hide the overlay. Is the opacity set? Yes, it is. Okay. And 
Away we go. Whoops, no, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Okay. Back up top. What did I just do? There we go. Okay. All right. Hide the base. Bring up the overlay. And... Now, the reason I actually set the opacity to 80 for the overlay, the overlay actually gets um, copied onto the base layer uh, after the entire map gets generated. Uh, so what it does is that it takes this kind of transparent overlay, makes it part of the base layer, and then puts the overlay back on top of itself again uh, so that in the actual game itself, it appears fully opaque the way that it should, but the player and objects can be seen faintly visibly through the trees. And it makes it so that when you're walking behind them, you can kind of see where you are and you can and you don't get too it's not too obscured. And I'll I'll kind of highlight that when we test this one, just to kind of show you what I mean. Okay, I think that's it for this one. Uh, once again. Pencil tool, size one pixel. Let's just hide those blue tiles. I can actually just do it this way. There, okay. And, okay. Hide the overlay for now. All right, so space one, three spaces one. Okay. One, two spaces two, two spaces one. Two spaces, two, two spaces, one. Yep. Space two, space, space two. Space two, space, space two. And one, space, space, and then yellow all the way across. One, space, space. Good. And then we got a couple spaces of gap here. So one, two, three, four rows of just nothing. So four, and then two space one space space two so one two three four two space space one space two no space space two wait what two space one space space two. Oh, i see i just yeah two space one Space, space, two. There we go. That's good. Ugh, focus. Okay. Space two, space two, and space, space one. Space two, space two, space, space one. One, space, space one, space, space two. One, space, space one, space, space two. And the last one, space two, space three space one space two space three space one space two space three space one good and that's it for that collision um technically yeah i mean I, like it do, it's not necessary to have these gaps um the only where it, place it's actually kind of necessary is on the map edge um because if this tile is open here then you may need to make it so that you can pass through just to make it convincing but like all these spaces could technically be filled in but i'm just going to leave them like that anyway the other thing that does is it prevents the map from having to overwrite the tile data for all those spaces so it just kind of reduces the workload a little bit when generating the map anyway uh this yeah this is u1 so we'll save that export a u1 Bring that into the ground layer. Overlay, good. Bring that up. AU1, export, save, and I'm just gonna close this. We don't need that anymore. 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna work on it anymore after this. Bring that in. And let's test it. This should be room configuration 21. Let's do full screen for this. Okay, 21. And let's see how it looks. That is the wrong map. I went to the Bloodstone Mine, not the Lyre Forest. One, good. And Liar Forest. Okay. There's a bit of a lag going on. My computer is being noisy and slow. Okay, again, spawned in a weird spot, but that doesn't matter. Okay, and there it is. There's the... Actually a fairly seamless transition. I'm actually not sure where the edge of the map is. I think it's right here. Pretty sure this is the border. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. It's just kind of a simple pass-through map to connect to different sections of forest. That's... That looks good. I like it. Oh, that's the bottom edge of the map. Uh, let's go further up. Yeah. Ah, I see a chest on the trees. Let's just grab it. I will have to do a little bit more testing for collision um another time just because i'll uh oh, i don't even know if i can show you you know what let's yeah let's do it that way um i'll turn on the debug mode to show what the collision looks like um and then we'll hide the part yeah so this is kind of a weird debug mode where now you can't there's nothing there's no overlay anymore but let's just see where the exit is there it is yeah, would not have seen that otherwise. Uh, let's turn the power back on. And let's see what the collision looks like. A jumbled mess, because I'm basically overriding all the blue tiles with either green, yellow, or purple to make sure that there's proper spawn tiles. Um, but it looks like all the red tiles, which are the impassable ones, are in the right space. Those are in the right spot, so that is good. Um, yeah. You know what, let's just do one more thing here real quick. I'll kind of show you what this looks like in its slightly unfinished, semi-finished, not really finished format. Um, okay, I'm going to take this, comment that out. That will do the proper collision now. And now let's go up to here, and we're going to make it so that it generates only rooms and no halls. And let's see what this looks like, because I finished all the base rooms, just not the pass-through hall sections. Let's do a quick little run-through just to see what this looks like without the, um, you know, with an actual properly generated layout. It's just every section is going to be a clearing. Here we go. You know, we get these little clusters of trees here in the middle. That's our, that's basically our walls. Chests are appearing in the right places. Exits are not appearing behind trees, so they're not obscured. That's good. It's kind of like these little clearings that are completely surrounded by trees so that you can't, uh... Essentially, this is the same as the cave dungeon, but it is instead a forest. And the layout... Uh, see, now here's the thing. You do get duplicate sections like this. We've got this taller kind of tree stump with the yellow weed. And then right here again, tall tree stump, yellow weed. Like, it's the same section. So I need to make more configurations like this so that you don't get duplicate rooms on any given floor. Um, but, as it stands right now, this does work. Uh, yeah, and there's no slipping through the trees here. There's a, yeah, the collision's all set up properly so that this is its own sectioned off part of the room. So let's see if we can get to that section. There's the 
transition to the next room. Yeah, and there's that other side of the clearing there. Let's see. Let's just check this one last section up here. No, nothing? Okay. Let's see if we can find a chest, that, like a, one of the red chests with the gold trim. And then we'll just call it a day there. Oh, look at that. Spawned right next to the exit. Which can happen, you know? It just, uh... The, the, the dungeon generator is, um, inspired by the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, uh, games, and how they randomly generate dungeons, which I guess I could just say Mystery Dungeon. That's a series on its own, but, um... Yeah, I I liked how, you know, the dungeons were completely... Oh my god, it's lagging so much. The, the dungeons were completely randomly generated, and, you know, they could have... Um, you know, the exit could spawn right next to you, or it could spawn all the way on the other side of the map. Why am I lagging so hard? That's brutal. Okay. My computer is just old, and I need to get a new one. But okay. Yeah, this looks all right. There we go, there's a chest. Let's see what's inside. Kind, kind of garbage. Yeah, I mean, not bad for early game stuff, but I've got some pretty good equipment. Yeah. Actually, one of the cool things that I managed to do over the past week was I added a system where you can favorite loot. So if you press the uh, dash button, it puts a little star next to the loot and all that really does is, uh, I'll kind of give you an example here. Um, if you favorite the loot and you try to salvage it, it's going to prevent you from doing that. Other things that are not favorited, you can still salvage, but as soon as you favorite it, you can't salvage it. Uh, and it's basically a way that uh, you cannot salvage or sell or discard any item that is favorited, and it's a way to make sure that you don't do that by accident. So if you're in a shop and you're just clearing out your inventory, uh, you won't accidentally sell something you don't mean to. Um, but yeah, it's just a just an extra little... Just something fun. Anyway, that's it for today. I just wanted to get a bit of work done and um, make a video. So, that's all. See you next time.